Hi, everybody. My name is Terry Morgan, and I'm a solutions engineer with Xplenty. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions during the webinar, please put them in the chat and I'll answer them at the end. I work with a client who uses Salesforce as their CRM and MongoDB for their backend server. They need access to their data in both places, but it can be challenging to move data between a relational structure like Salesforce and a NoSQL database like Mongo. However, without access to that Salesforce data in Mongo, they're forced to manually search in both places for the total data they require, and it's limiting their ability to bring on new customers and grow their business. Many businesses are moving to MongoDB to handle their large volume of structured and unstructured data. However, that doesn't mean they're done working with data in relational tables. On the contrary, they still rely on that data and those databases. Here's where Xplenty can help. We can take that valuable Salesforce data and format it to load into a Mongo collection where it will be ready for querying. <clears throat> During this demonstration, we will take three Salesforce objects from this schema, the account object, the contact object, and the contract object, and transform them into one single Mongo collection and migrate that collection to MongoDB. The most fundamental change in migrating the data from Salesforce to MongoDB is the way in which the data is modeled. We will be transforming the data from a columns and rows structure to a document model with embedded subdocuments and arrays. Here is the target schema <clears throat> that we will uh, structure the data for. Each account will have an array of contacts objects and contracts objects. Let's go ahead and head over to Xplenty. Okay, welcome to Xplenty. We're going to go ahead and start with adding our Salesforce source component. Okay, we'll start by bringing in our account object. So next we'll select account from our object drop down menu. Move to the last step where we can select our fields. So for this demonstration, we're going to need the name field and the industry field. We'll also need the ID. That's going to be the account ID. Now we need a created date and a billing. Let's see, we need the billing. I'm looking for the billing street. There we are. Got it. And the last one is owner ID. Okay. So those are the six fields that we need in the account object. Go ahead and save that component. Now for the, <clears throat> for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and copy in the contacts and the contracts objects. So we went through the same process in here, brought in, brought in the contact object, as well as selected its fields that we needed also. So especially important in here is this account ID. This is, this will allow us to relate the contact data to the given account that it's associated with. Okay, so now that we have our three different Salesforce objects, all that data loaded in, the next thing we need to do is format. We're going to start with the contacts and we need to format that data into the shape that it needs to be in to be able to be loaded into MongoDB. So first we're going to pass through the account ID um, and then we are going to take the remaining contact fields. We're going to form a map out of them. A map is like a JSON object. So I need the to map function. Okay. And then I need those fields, those contact fields that are passing through this, this stream of data. So first we have email and then email. So I'm going to use this first as I'll put it in single quotes and that will become the key 
And this, this second is the field that's actually passing through and that's the value in this key value pair. So I will go through the same process with the remaining fields. There we go. Uh, and then we'll put the first of each of those inside single quotes. And name, there we go. Now we'll save this function and these are gonna be our contacts. And we'll go ahead and save this component. So now we've got each of those, uh, each group of contact fields grouped together in a JSON object. Now the last thing we need to do to prepare that to send to Mongo is to collect all of those JSON objects inside of an array. So we're gonna aggregate this data. We're gonna group the input data by the account ID. Then we're gonna perform a collect function on those contacts objects. This will group all of those objects inside an array and now we're gonna save that component. So now our context data is ready to be joined with our account data. So we'll grab a join component, bring it down here, join it together with that contact data. You can see in the first step, our inputs are the account on the left and the contact data that's been aggregated on the right. So I would like to choose a left join. I want all of the account data and then only the contact data that relates to the given accounts. And then I select my join key. So the account ID on the left and the account ID on the right from the aggregate. Okay, so now we've joined the contact data with the account data. Now we need, to, we need to perform these same functions, these same transformations on our contract data. So again, save us a little bit of time. I will copy those components in, go ahead and connect them to our contract data. You can see in here that we've done the same thing that we did with contact data, forming those key value pairs with all of the given contract fields then we collect them into that uh, aggregation component. Now we're going to join them with this data. Get a join component. Let's bring it over here. Connect it to our contract data. So let's see on the left, you can see this is our data that was our account data joined with our contact data. We have our contract data on the right. We will perform a left join again. Now we need that account ID and the account ID here. So now we've joined all of those data sets together. The last step that we wanna go through to, to, to prepare the, this data is one of renaming and um, renaming some of those fields as well as eliminating the duplicate account IDs that we have coming through from our, our several steps of joining. So like this ID field here, that's the account ID coming from the account object. You can see we also have another account ID <clears throat> coming from the first join as well as from the second area. So given that I am confident that those are all the same IDs, I'm gonna remove these duplicates. And just for clarity, I'm gonna go ahead and name, rename this ID to account ID. I'm gonna go ahead and put that at the top of the list. So account ID, name, industry, created date, billing street, and owner ID are all fields coming from our account object. Then we have the nested data coming from the contacts as well as the contracts. So let's go ahead and save this component. Now, the last thing to do is just to send it to MongoDB. 
come in here. Now we're going to give our, our collection a name, Salesforce accounts, that sounds great. Our operation type, we'll select insert only. And the final step is to map our columns. So we'll autofill to bring them in. Now you can see them all in here. The last step in here is we need to tell MongoDB that both contacts and contracts are BSON data types. BSON is a binary serialization format used to store those nested data types. So we're communicating with MongoDB that that's what we're sending over. We're gonna save this component now we have brought together our, our three different Salesforce components, brought in that object data and the fields. We've transformed them. We've joined them all together into the shape to be sent into a Mongo collection. So at this point, go ahead and save this component. Go on ahead and run this job. You can see it right here. It's completed successfully. Now we can go over into MongoDB and find that collection. Here we are. And you can see in here, so each of these objects, each of these documents inside the collection has an ID, so this is the Mongo ID. Then there's the account ID that relates to Salesforce, name, industry, billing street, created date, owner ID, as well as a contacts array. So this, this one has one contact and then a contracts array. And there are three contracts associated in here. So in here, you can see that we have been able to successfully format that data into the nested arrays that, that make up a Mongo collection. Now your Salesforce data is readily available for you in your Mongo collection. Move to the last. So now this concludes today's demonstration. We do have several questions. So let me answer a few of them. Okay, let's see. So the first question, can I move data the other way around from Mongo back to Salesforce? That's a great question. Um, so in our demonstration, we moved Salesforce data into Mongo, um, taking it from a relational structure into, into a NoSQL structure. Yes, the, the answer to that question is that yes, we can absolutely take it back the other way. We could take the Mongo collection with its nested data types, parse them out and send them back into Salesforce, which would allow, which actually is, is totally the use case for my given client where they need access to the, that data, both the data that it lives in Mongo, as well as the data that lives in Salesforce. Um, and they need access to that data in both places. So yes, we can absolutely do that. Thank you for the question. Okay, um, let's take time for maybe one more. Um, so in the demo, you created a new collection. Can I bring data into an existing collection? Ah, okay, That's, that, is, that is terrific. So yes, we can. Xplenty can build and create a new collection. We can send that data in there. Um, uh, now, continuing on, if you were then going to continue to, for instance, sync your Salesforce data with Mongo, we could then continue to push into that same collection. On the other hand, if you create your collection in Mongo already, um, we could absolutely send the data from Salesforce or wherever using X20, we can push that data into an existing collection as well. There is no limit. It doesn't have to be one or the other, either way works. Um, if you remember, there were, uh, we selected the insert only operation type in the Mongo uh, destination component, but there is also kind of a, a merge with existing data and update and insert uh, 
operation type as well. And so we could use that to continue syncing that data over once we're ready to automate that, that uh, data pipeline. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. If anyone else has questions, um, by all means, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email address is here. I'm happy to answer questions offline as well. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.